Well, good morning. You know, I have a lot of people, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a lot of people that, um, you know, when they get on the boat, they ask me, it's like, you know, what are you looking for today? I mean, you, you've got a certain spot we're going to, you, a certain area we're going to, uh, you know, how do you look at a large expanse of water like this and pick out a spot? <clears throat> well, the truth is you don't pick out a spot. You pick out an area, and that area is based on structure and conditions. Okay, you know today we've got a little bit of a north wind. It's it's uh, uh, about the time of year we're going to start getting some fronts. Not really a cold front. We got a little bit of a north wind. So in my mind, when I was setting up for today, I was like, okay, northeast wind, 12 to 15, high tide. I see that tide when I get to the dock. I got little marks that I look on the dock. You know. So what am I going to look at? Well, I'm going to try to look at something that's maybe windward or at least has wind blowing down it. So it maybe gives me an opportunity to stack bait up against the shoreline itself. But at the same time, because it's not cold and water temperature is still fairly warm, I'm going to want some quick deep water access that has lichen structure. The area that I fish in my bay systems, we've got submerged grass, we've got oyster shell, we got backwater lakes, which are similar in bottom structure. So structure is grass and shell and sand. That's what it is. You know, in here it's grass and potholes, uh, sh both shallow and deep. You know, how do you pick whether you're shallow or deep? Well, you see where the bait is. Well, how do you see where the bait is? Well, you look. You look and you see a, a mullet jump there, or you see a mullet jump there, or you see an osprey, and that osprey is hovering above you, looking, talking, look, twitching his head around, looking down. He sees the bait. I wish I had, I wish I had his ability to elevate, and I wish I had his ability to, to see what he sees, because they are the real fishermen out here. And once I find an area like that, then I'll set up accordingly and get my guys out, and we'll make a way, and I'll usually put somebody a little bit shallow over the shallow structure, somebody in the middle, you know, area, and then maybe even somebody a little bit deep. Once one of the two or three, somebody gets a bite, then we'll start and we set a pattern, then we'll, we'll work that pattern until it changes. And it will change. It will change throughout the day. There's no doubt it'll change. And what'll change it is the amount of sunlight that enters the water, the a rise or drop in water temperature, you know, a rise or drop in wind velocity, those things will change where the fish are set up. But remember this, they're always going to be where there's structure and they're always going to be where there's food. So if you have the proper structure for the area you're fishing and in and around that structure you have a food source that's predictable and consistent, there's going to be game fish in the area. Okay, so um, what I, I guess what I'm saying is every day that I fish yeah, I'm aware of seasonal patterns, absolutely, but I wipe the slate clean at the end of the day, the previous day, and that next morning I have a clear canvas and I kind of let the day paint a picture for me as to what it is that we need to do. Understand this, it's not all, you can't always do what you want to do. Uh, the best fishermen do what they need to do and what they're shown to do. So hopefully we'll be able to show you a little bit of that today. Uh, we've got a great day for it. It's beautiful. It's the middle of the week. There's not a lot of boats out here, so it could be very, very good. You know, what I'm gonna do here is, I love areas along spoils or shorelines where you have these little bitty funnels, that little little breaks in the grass. And right out in front of me, I've got an area where it's spotted grass. And then to my right, it's almost all solid grass. And then it spots up and it makes a little, a little like funnel in there. And uh, 
those are areas that fish will travel down the edge, go up into that little funnel, set up, then travel down the edge and turn around and come back. They're great little, great little spots to, to ease up to and stand there and, and make multiple casts. I always bend my cast a little, then I get that rod down, I'm throwing a double D. I've got a really lazy seagull that is used to somebody feeding it that's following my bait out there, which sooner or later he'll figure out that that's not what he wants, and hopefully it's not, you know, in a negative way by him grabbing it, which he didn't. You can tell he's a real young bird, doesn't have any color on him. I'm, I'm kind of bending my cast down on the edge here and working it out through this broken bottom. And uh, I'm working it aggressively because uh, I want it to dig down a little bit. I want it to dig down 12, 14 inches and then suspend and pause just a little bit, you know, and hoping that that, that, that pause or that little hitch in the giddy up gets you, gets you a strike. You know, I'm just a, we're imitating, a, you know, a, you know, a, uh, erratic or or injured type of bait fish or um, you know where the sides shining and glinting it's a reaction that flash uh, shows the side of a fish and that game fish picks up on that flash and it's got a rattle in it that makes noise that'll attract the fish to it as well And I'll fish little areas like this, and sometimes I'll stop in an area that won't have but one or two little little bitty washouts or little bitty funnels like this, and then I'll move on. You know, it's kind of like aiming small, missing small until I figure out on the spoil where it is and what it is they, they you know, that they want and where they want it. You know, are those fish up around this spoil today? Absolutely they are. This kind of wind blowing down it, blowing into some of the points, like this little point down here on it down there yeah absolutely they are absolutely can they be out there really deep that's where the bait's been I hadn't seen a lot of bait shallow a little bit up there but most of it's been offshore out here which lends me to believe that that's where that's where they are that would especially be true for me that you know, more times than not when I'm fishing, I'm targeting trout. I'm not targeting reds. Reds, you know, with me a lot are incidental catch uh, on most days because I'm trout fishing. That's just what I am. Not who I am, but what I am, I guess. So right now I'm throwing this Texas Custom Double D, just trying to cover some water, trying to make some noise, trying to get some flash and see if I can get a see if I can get a reaction. I expect a, a strike on every cast. And you should too. That way you're ready. You know, if you're not ready then there's a really good chance that you're going to miss it. Just like that right there, see? That's what I'm talking about. Just like that. Just got to be ready. Not a, not a big fish, but a fish. Got me in the grass. Came off in the grass. Okay, now when that happens, like I said, it wasn't a big fish. When that happens, you want to throw it right back there. Even though that fish stunk, got stung a little bit, Maybe the girlfriend did not. So I'm gonna, I know where that strike came. I'm gonna repeat that strike. And I'm gonna come right back to it.
Okay. All right, let's move on. I pulled up to another little area here. And what I like about this area is I've got real scattered grass. A big, big expanse of sand, but I got scattered grass beds. So I got smaller targets. And as I pulled in and started to drift down and kind of put the power poles down and drug a little bit, a little slick popped up on one of the grass beds out here. So already that's a positive sign that there's some fish holding on these little small grass beds. So what we're going to do is you're going to target those grass beds. You're going to make cast at the edges of the grass beds, the points over behind them, and just work that lure in around them, see what happens. And pay attention to where you get the strike. Was it in front of the grass? Was it off the point? Was it behind the grass bed? Was it up on top of the grass bed? Was it in the you know, expanse of sand in between? So we've got pelican activity down here. That shows you got a bait line. You see the bait working. Mullet jumping to the right of them. We'll just ease our way out here, see what happens. right through that little funnel there. A little bit of a funnel. Just a narrow little passage between two grass beds. There he is. There she is. Let's see, I got a reel into her. There we go. Let's see, I got her that time. She, I reeled into her and she just was in that funnel. A little funnel in there and she was sitting in it. Now you'll notice if you get to watch me, I keep my rod tip down. I don't want her jumping. You know, I know it's pretty and I know it, you know, it's, it's exciting, but it's also a good way for one to get off. Oh yeah, that's a pretty fish. We might, we might let her jump for the camera a little bit, a little bit. Oh, now see, that's what happens when she jumps like that. We let her jump and see how that lure was sideways in her mouth. So that's a really, I'm glad that happened actually. That's a really good lesson. You know, that fish, I, I let her come up. I let her shake, you know. I mean, it was pretty. Uh, gonna let them go anyway, but that's why you wanna develop good habits. Keep that rod tip flat. Allow that water, the resistance of the water to help tire her out and to kind of retard the, the, the shake of her head, okay? So see, even in, what most people would think is a bad situation the fish gets off, there's a learning, there's a learning there. And I learned a lot when I was fishing by fish, big fish or good fish that I lost. I learned more from them than I learned from the ones I caught, if that makes any sense. Okay, good, that was a nice fish. She thumped it good and a little head shake there for us. Now see, I went right back to that funnel, right back in it, because I'm not, there's no part of me that thinks I caught the only fish there or threw it in front of the only one there. I just, I just don't think that because that's not the truth. You know, I use a moderate power rod, not a fast, not a fast action, but a moderate power. And the reason for that is with a suspending plug, a, you know, a custom corky, a soft dine, a mirror lure, a mirror dine, double D, any of them. Any bait that's a harder bait, bigger bait that she's, you know, you got treble hooks on and it's bigger bait that she can't, maybe can't close her mouth on. I want the rod to be soft enough to absorb that head shake. Allow me to, allow me to exert a lot of pressure with drag, but the rod be forgiving, if that makes sense to you.
I got in this clear water, so I'm gonna switch over and throw a clear bodied bait. I like this little John XL red red gold glitter. This water's really, really clear in here. See if we can entice one. You always want to get that bait on straight. That's the key to keeping, making the bait work right and keeping line twist down by getting that, getting that bait on there straight like that. And here the target's little small potholes. You can see we got a bunch, bunch of them right here in front of us. So we're just gonna, gonna probe these little potholes and see what happens. There's fish right there. First cast in that pot with that clear bait. Little fish. Little rat red. I guess he liked that color. There's a whole lot of times that people believe that that first cast, you catch fish on the first cast, you should just get back in the boat and quit fishing. <laughs> I'm not of that mindset by any means. Okay. Good fish for the future. A little better start than what we had previously. Hopefully we'll get maybe a really, really nice trout to come up in here. Those trout love these grass flats like this. They live up here. They get away from predation up here. They get away from dolphins. They get away from sharks. They get away from a lot of boats that are running, you know, which is us they get away from. They'll get up in here and, and live in these grass flats year round. People say, well, they don't live there in the winter time. So they darn sure do. Say when they have a freeze, where, what, where does it kill them? <laughs> Kills them right here. Kills them where they're living. one right there that one hit like a trout forgive me I'm having to fight my camera because I'm not used to that camera being there the other thing is you'll notice I have to keep my rod tip up a little more here the reason for that is grass I got this turtle grass and that grass is very abrasive and so I got to keep it up so that I don't you know he didn't saw me off fish is pulling to the right here Walk down in a pothole. It's a red. I'm not unhappy that it's a red, <laughs> but I didn't think it was. <laughs> it kind of shook like a like a trout. See, I have to give them drag because they can't take it. <laughs> One like this for sure can't. But again, she ate it. I don't use pliers if I don't have to, just because I don't know what pressure I'm putting on them when I'm using a plier, and I can twist and turn some, so I don't use them when I can. When I do use pliers, it's Danko pliers, obviously. Uh, but also, your hands start to look like that if you don't use pliers. Those are fishing hands, not computer hands. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can Get one with some, get old Snaggletooth out of there somewhere. She's got to be in there somewhere. There's one. There we go. There we go. That one stayed in the pothole. Now it's gonna come out in this grass and I gotta keep her up. You can see how see how that grass is is around that line. Now if you get a mop on there, a 
lot of grass on there. Sometimes you can take it, pop it like that and see it'll pop right off. See, by reeling down on them and letting them load up a little bit, that fish will turn right or left and you'll get her in the hinge, which is a great place to get her. Doesn't hurt her, easy to, easy to control her, turn her left and right, because you can turn her head, okay, and it's easy for the hook to get out. Anyway, nice red, not a big one. Surely there's a trout in there in this mix. Terrible cast. Boom, there's a fish. There we go. So you notice we've, I put the brakes on because I'm catching these fish in this pothole out in front of me. It's a small fish here. I can, when I say he's a small fish, I can tell he is by the way he's, by the way he's fighting. He hit it as soon as he hit the water. Yep, see? That doesn't even qualify as a rat. That's a mouse. But, again, hooked on the outside where he's easy to get out. fish these outside edges of grass. The farthest little edges of grass that uh, extend out toward the break. We'll just get out here and just see see what happens. This time of day, this time of morning, some of those fish bright sun, maybe those fish move to the outside out here. You gotta feel your way along and just see if you get a bite. This time of day, these fish are going to be with, you got no clouds, you got high pressure set in. Fish are going to be close to the grass. They're going to be close to the grass. So, you want to cast, cast in close to the grass. Cast to the points of it and bring it back. Maybe a little slick in there. There's one. Little fish. I saw a little grass bed out there. And, um, 
Thought I saw a little slick. There's plenty of bait in here, but. Plenty of bait. Again, hooked in the hinge. It's where you want him. Nice little fat fish, but good brood stock. Good brood stock. Now that fish slicked right there. So let's see if she's by herself or if she's got some girlfriends out there. Good little bite, good strike. He thumped it. I do think they've moved out to the outside this time of day. I typically catch them on the outside this time of day. Turtle, <laughs> big sea turtle came up out there. There's one, there's one. See, see, that was a bite, but see how real, real, real and not catch up with her? The fish picked it up and just hauled butt. But that was a real bite there. It hit, that, it hit the edge of that grass when it ran into it, but that was a real bite. I mean, I don't know what size fish it was. I couldn't tell. It wasn't a hard, hard bite, but it was a bite. She went pink right as it came through that little pothole. We also hadn't caught any of the reds in here that we've been catching in here. We've been catching some reds. There we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. See that fish, that fish reeled. I reeled back through at that time, and that time I just kept reeling just because uh, of, the, of the nature of how the fish hit. I just reeled it up through the grass. Nice trout. Nice. Look at that scar down her side. See, that's a dolphin. Dolphins hit that fish. Hooked right in the hinge. Not ready yet. Yeah, see that dolphin? Grabbed her on both sides. See all those rake marks? Looks like a comb all the way down the side of her. Poor thing. Being harassed all day by a dead gum dolphin and then me harassing her. Yeah, nice fish. See that fish hit it, hit it the cast before, and just didn't get it. Ran right at me. I didn't sting her. I just, I just kind of ticked her with it. Mm -hmm. 